Olivia has discovered that her great-great-great-grandmother Harriet was born in Kishanganj, in the Indian state of Bihar in 1807. To get to Kishanganj, Olivia must travel to the northeast of India, close to the border with Nepal. It's very misty at the moment. Much greener than I imagined. Ashish, what farms are these? Uh, so cool. Look, this is all Darjeeling tea. God, I'm in India. <laughs> that you can overtake on either side of the road. And there's a lot of horn tooting. On the outside of a bend! I think that's probably the most used bit of the car. Which side of the road was he on? It's most of your carriageway. The thought that members of my family have lived here it's amazing. Just such a long way to come. Olivia's great 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 grandmother Harriet was born in the early 1800s, before British imperial rule in India. At the time, British involvement in India was through the East India Company, a corporation with a monopoly on exotic goods from the East. With regional headquarters in Calcutta, the East India Company used an extensive fleet of ships minted its own coins and had its own armies, which grew to be twice the size of the regular British army. By the time of Harriet's birth, the company's authority stretched deep into the interior of India. Uh, this is Kishan Ganj, madam. Oh, cool. It's much busier than I thought it would be. This fruit and veg look beautiful. <laughs> outfits that some of the goats have. This is amazing. I think my great-great-great-grandmother Harriet was born here 200 years ago. Today, Kishanganj is a city of over 100,000 people. When Olivia's ancestors were here, it was a village. <laughs> Olivia has come to the former British club in Kishanganj to meet historian Anuradha Chatterjee. Namaste. Namaste, Miss Chatterjee. Welcome to Kishanganj. Thank you very much. I have some papers to show you. Should we take a look? Yeah. Thank you. Please. Thank you. Well, the first thing we have is a marriage certificate, Harriet's marriage certificate, and it's got her father's name. Slesser? Yes. William Slesser. So she was Harriet Slesser before she married Charles Bazet. Yes. And this tells you more about William Slesser. Born in 1778. So, as you can see, he travelled a lot around India with the army belonging to the East India Company. He was involved in various wars, and by 1804, he becomes a captain. Right. And ultimately, we know that he came here to Kishanganj. OK. And Harriet was born here? Yes. So, do you know anything about William's domestic life here, who he married? Well, that's... The strange thing is we could not find either a marriage certificate for William uh, or a birth certificate for Harriet. OK, so what does that mean? The strong possibility is that um, Harriet's mother was not British and that very likely, very probably, uh, she was a local lady. Oh! In the early 19th century, I don't think British women would have come to the interior of India. This would be way too far out. So it was very common that East India Company uh, officials would actually live with local women. Soon we'd be coming to find records about English people, from, but not that my great, 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 great grandmother is Indian. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, that's so exciting. From here? Yes. From Kishan Genj? Yes, very probably. She's Indian. <laughs> oh, this is so exciting. I'm so much more interesting than I thought I was. <laughs> It's estimated that in the later part of the 18th century, 
a third of British men in India were living with, and often having children with, Indian women. What's this? It's an administrative list of William Slessor's possessions, telling us about their lives here. Wow! One small writing desk, one paper slice, one rule, it's so detailed, two papers of ink powder, hookah pipe. Yes. Do you know what hookah is? Is that the big, the pipe? Smoking, smoking tobacco through water. Through the, yeah. Yes. It's just swords, 27 pairs of pantaloons. So I suppose it's a different time, isn't it? Yeah. Corks with silver tops, Bible and prayer book, Hindustani grammar and the volumes of Shakespeare's works. It's just amazing, isn't it? Bottle of Madeira and a hookah pipe. Sounds lovely, yes. doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Quite near the bottom of the list. One elephant. Elephant. <laughs> <laughs> elephant. A real That's elephant. Right. A real elephant. Are you kidding? This gives me an amazing picture of the, of the life that Harriet was born into. Two languages, bits of silver on corks and an elephant. Great mixture. Yeah. Britain and India. Yeah. yeah. Sounds beautiful. It does. But it doesn't last very long. OK. The Madras Courier of February last contains the following article. We are extremely concerned to relate a melancholy accident that happened to Captain Slesser, so that's William, at Kissengunj. Captain Slesser was out shooting, his gun having misfired. He had just reprimed when the gun went off and its contents passing through his head. He was killed on the spot. So this is 1810. How old would Harriet have been? Three or four years old. Oh, no! Yes, so really young. So considering we think they weren't married, what happens? Do we know anything about what happens to Harriet or, and her mum? Well, we don't know what happened to her mummy. Uh, but about Harriet, we do have some information. There's a letter from a lawyer. OK, so uh, in cash paid out on account of Miss Harriet Slesser, Captain Fairfax for Miss Slesser's voyage to England. Oh, OK. 1,400 sicker rupees. In fact, her grandmother, William's mother, who was also called Harriet, actually paid for Harriet to be taken from India and brought to England. Wow. Aged three or four? Aged three or four. Did the mother have any say in the matter? I think it most unlikely that her mother would have had any rights over her. On the other hand, she might have been happy that Harriet was going somewhere where she would have a good life. Yeah. We don't know. Yeah. yeah. The thing that I just find sad is that she's so little, she's not far off the age of my youngest, going to the other side of the world. Wondering where daddy has gone without your mummy. Oh. But hopefully, hopefully she has a happy time and they'll love her. So we don't know about Harriet's mum, we don't know what happened to we her. We don't know specifically oh. what happened to her mother, no, no. So, um, little Harriet is here in Kishengenj and the grandmother wants to get her back to England. How does she start, who, how does that work? <laughs> well, she'd have to go to Calcutta, which is almost 500 kilometres from here. Gosh, that's mm -hmm. such a thing to do, isn't it? The thought that Harriet's mum came from here, so I might have relatives here. It's really exciting. And then little Harriet's life. It's a proper bittersweet thing. My father's died, and the intervention of Harriet's grandmother, I suppose, obviously, obviously it makes sense. Let's give her a better life in England. And I'm so pleased somebody wants to love her. The thing I feel most sad about is that we don't know Harriet's mummy. We don't know her name. We'll never know if she had much say in it, but she, she gave up her daughter for hopefully for the best reasons, knowing that she, you know, she wouldn't see her again. Oh, it's hard. So next, I want to find out about Harriet's journey. I want to know that she's OK. Olivia now knows that little Harriet, following her father's death in 1810, was sent from Kishinganj to England. Her grandmother, also called Harriet, paid for her passage. <laughs> 